Ask unanimous consent the following the confirmation vote on the Williams nomination, the Senate vote on confirmation of Executive Calendar 920, the nomination of Bernadette Meehan to be the ambassador to Chile. Without objection. And now back to my statement, Madam President. I came to the floor and heard a speech by the Republican leader, Mitch McConnell of Kentucky. Now, it wasn't the first. I've heard many of them. And I listened closely so that I can divine the strategy of Senate Republicans. And for weeks, we have heard speeches about the plight of American families dealing with inflation. It's a real problem. You go to buy anything these days, you're shocked by the price, starting at the gas pump. If you have aspirations to buy a car or a truck, ordinary food items, much more expensive. Most families are not seeing any increase in income, so it's a real hardship for them to keep up. Well, the senator from Kentucky has given that speech so many times I can almost repeat it verbatim. And I don't quarrel with this premise. Inflation is painful for working families. But then, but then, he went into an area of pricing and took an exactly opposite point of view. What he said was, he thought if there was an effort to control the price of prescription drugs, it was, quote, socialist price control, close quote. It was really asking for something for nothing. And he didn't support it. And I stopped to think for a second, wait a minute. All the polling, when you ask American families what they worry about, tells you that this is a big headache for families. They go to a doctor, somebody's sick, the doctor prescribes a drug, they take the prescription to the drugstore, they get it filled, and then comes the moment of truth, the moment at the cash register, when the family is told, uh, incidentally, that'll cost you $100, $200, $300 over your insurance coverage. And you know what some families say? I wish I could afford that. I can't. They don't pick up the drug. Or they pick it up, and instead of taking it, they kind of wait and say, I'll see if I get any better by myself. They do the wrong thing because of the cost of prescription drugs. So when the Republican senators come to the floor every day talking about family expenses, it comes as a shock to know that they are planning to oppose the democratic effort to establish prescription drug, drug price controls. Not drug pricing, I should say. They complain about high prices for everything else, but they don't seem to want to do anything when it comes to prescription drugs. Americans pay the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. An average of four times as much paid by an American family for exactly the same drugs that are being sold in Canada and Europe. Four times. Well, where are those drugs made? All made in the same place, all made by the same company, four times the cost for America. To add insults to injury, many of these prescription drugs only exist because of a successful investment by American taxpayers in the National Institutes of Health. National Institutes of Health is an amazing research organization. They do the research, the basic research. The drug companies capitalize on it, make the drugs, and sell them at a profit. So taxpayers pay on the front end for the drugs. American taxpayers and taxpaying families pay on the back end for the actual cost of the pharmaceuticals. Out of control prescription costs aren't just hurting people financially, they hurt the health of Americans. One in five Americans don't take the medications as prescribed because they can't afford them. They cut their pills in half or they skip doses because they can't do it, they can't pay it. Your money or your life. You expect to hear that from a stick-up artist, not from a pharmaceutical company. That's the choice Americans face. So we want to do something about it. Democrats don't want to give speeches about the cost of families. We want to do something. We want to bring down the cost of prescription drugs for seniors first and then for families in general. If you really care about inflation, most families would say start with prescription drugs. That's what we're doing and the Republicans are going to oppose this. Ironically, Senator McConnell gives a speech calling it socialism to deal with the cost of prescription drugs, and within an hour, the senior senator from Iowa gives a speech on the floor of the Senate, Republican senator, how he wants to cut prescription drug prices for seniors. 
He, one of them didn't get the message of the caucus. I think the senator from Iowa is right, incidentally. Some Democrats are, so Democrats are proposing to allow Medicare to negotiate fair prices for drugs. We've been doing that for a long time when it comes to the Veterans Administration. The Veterans Administration buys a lot of prescription drugs for our veterans, and I'm glad they do, and they negotiate with these companies to get a fair price. We think Medicare ought to do the same thing. It reduces the cost of prescription drugs. It makes them more affordable for seniors. Now, a lot of people say, well, if you do that, then the prescription drug companies, the pharmaceutical companies, just aren't going to be able to make it. Well, here's the reality. Studies have found that big pharma could lose $1 trillion in sales over the next decade and still remain the most profitable industry in America. Lose $1 trillion in sales and still be the most profitable industry. Higher profit margins in pharma than in the telecom industry, than in the defense industry, in the banking industry, and the Republicans are saying they're afraid that they're going to get hurt if consumers can buy drugs at lower prices. But good news for those who fear that if you cut the amount of money going to pharma, it will cut research. That's not what we've learned. We know Bayer, it's been around a long time, started off as a German company, made aspirin. Now they've made some sizable acquisitions in, in the business. They make a drug called Xarelto. Now you'd have to watch that television ad 10 or 12 times to be able to spell Xarelto. But they are trying to convince American consumers they can't live without it. They spent, Bayer spent $18 billion on sales and marketing last year compared to $8 billion on research for drugs. Johnson & Johnson, $22 billion on sales and marketing, $12 billion on research. GlaxoSmithKline, $15 billion on sales and marketing, $7 billion on research. Get the pattern? There's more money being spent on advertising than on research for new drugs. Americans get bombarded with nine drug ads on TV every day, telling them to ask their doctor for the newest wonder drug. There are only two nations on Earth where you can legally advertise prescription drugs on television. One, of course, is the United States. The other, for some reason, is New Zealand. Filling the airways with ads is what Big Pharma does to try to convince customers they can't live without their drugs. So the claim that allowing Medicare to negotiate a reasonable price for seniors will freeze out Big Pharma's innovation just doesn't wash. Senator McConnell says, quote, there is no free lunch when it comes to prescription drug pricing. Let's keep in mind that the 14 largest drug corporations spent more on stock buybacks lining the pockets of their CEOs than on research and development over the past five years. So here's what it comes down to. Look at these just as an illustration. I'll do this quickly because members are showing up to vote. Insulin, discovered by Canadian researchers at the beginning of the 20th century. They surrendered the patent for the drug for a dollar so that it would never be overcharged to consumers because it's a life and death drug for those suffering from diabetes. Take a look from the year 2004 until 2020 to what has happened to the drug insulin cost, insulin cost on a regular basis. The manufacturing price by year, you can see that tracks all the companies that make insulin, is as high as $300 a dose and a person suffering diabetes may need three doses a month. $900 for insulin. Well, let's take a comparative cost and take a look at what insulin costs in other countries. The United States, while it's paying $98 for a dose of insulin, look, Japan's paying 14, Canada 12, Germany 11, France 9, UK 7, Australia 6, $7. And the good news is these are the same companies, the American companies, charging a fraction of the cost in the other countries for insulin. This is one of the drugs which we're working on now, Senator Shaheen and others, to bring down the cost. I'm going to close by saying this. If you care about the cost the families face, if you care about inflation, and you care about life or death medications, and you want to make them affordable, don't take the position of Senator McConnell that this is socialism to demand negotiation and pricing. Don't take 
his position that it's just a free lunch to say that people will never have to pay more than $2,000 a year out of pocket for drugs. This is a life or death decision. Even 70% of Republicans agree with that. I wish the Senate Republicans would agree with it and join us in supporting this bill. I yield the floor.